Welcome to your top rated global podcast that is your one stop shop specializing in entrepreneurship, self development, smart investment decisions, and other relevant topics that add value. This podcast is hosted by owner, doctor, and content creator Dustin Steffi. We are blessed to have accolades that include a 2022 nomination by the People's Podcast Awards in the category of business which is voted on by the people, all of you. Money donated to two amazing causes, Cystic Fibrosis and the Boys and Girls Club. Lastly, global recognition of being a top 50 podcast in four countries. Without further ado, let's chop it up. Welcome back to another episode of Chopping with Fire. You're joined with yours truly, Dustin Steffi, and my special guest, my buddy, Dwayne Taylor. Dwayne, welcome back. It's good. It's good to be back. Um, it's always a pleasure to get on get on here and talk shop with you. So, you know, I'm uh, I'm honored, and I'm looking forward to to this conversation, this dialogue, this back and forth. We got unfinished band. business, you know? We do, man. You know, is it ever really finished business, though, when we're talking college sports? No. Never. NIL? I don't yeah, think it's no. ever finished. No, and there were there were nuggets we left out on purpose because we wanted to see where everything heads. Like, so we're gonna we're gonna tie some things together today. I think we're gonna really just hone in on a few things that, you know, left people thinking like okay Mm -hmm. what more is there so i'm i mean i'm excited we got a we got a pretty packed agenda so we're gonna try to be as succinct as possible but we definitely got some good uh just some good key nuggets and some good research between you and i and uh it's gonna be some exciting stuff let's do yeah for sure and it always is now let's (laughs) let's make magic on this podcast we always do (laughs) We always do something. So Uh, definitely speaking of that real quick, just want to bring up one quick housekeeping thing. Um, In two weeks, the people get to vote on us. So in two weeks, the 2023 people's podcast awards are open and voting up. So I would love it if we win the nomination and then win it this year. Well, what's who do we who do we need to call? Let's let's do it. Let's man, man, who do I need happen. to make a house call to? You know what I mean? <laughs> right. No, right. so like for this first step from July first to the July thirtieth is voting by the people. So the biggest thing is is being active. So going on to the website, which I'll disclose in a couple of weeks, voting for chopping with fire and getting us the nomination. Once we get the nomination, how it works is it goes in front of the committee and then it's it's on them to vote for me really you know okay okay so well then we well, we need that vote yeah we do so we're going to get it mhm i believe so and we're going to so, we're going to give them no choice no it's not, not at all no choice no come on choice. let's 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 be real here like we know we got something good here so we just right. we 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 don't even need the validation it's just let's let's win it that's it. Just, just win it. Just give it to yeah. us now. Yeah. It's yeah. already it's already done. Just yeah, give it exactly. To yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I did when I played sports, right? I'm gonna go to bed, I'm gonna sleep, and I'm gonna visualize the win holding the trophy. <laughs> oh man, that's self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. <laughs> you gotta love it. And that is so real too. That's so true. Yeah. You, know, you gotta see it, you gotta see it first before it actually uh comes to life right right so that's the only housekeeping thing i have obviously social media is important guys if you haven't done it already head on over to our socials uh there's millions of socials all right so let's i guess i'll be a little more specific we have all the main socials find your favorite one 
find chopping with fire give us a comment give us a like subscribe tell us how we're doing let's have some fun with that we love audience engagement so check us out youtube another important median all of our episodes are video recorded so if you want to see my ugly mug you want to see Dwayne's ugly mug you want to see anybody's ugly mug head on over to youtube.com forward slash chopping with fire check us out we're right there yeah it's, it's waiting it's for you literally a keystroke away and make sure you pound that like button when you check us out too absolutely let's yes. dive into current events so we brought up aaron Rodgers last time i want to bring him up just one last time and the reason i'm harping on aaron Rodgers is I can't harp on Tom Brady. He's retired. So let's harp on another veteran, right? So right. Aaron Rodgers completes perfect attendance for Jets OTAs. Um, he did have a strained calf, so he was limited in practicing. However, he was there. He was vocal. He was trying to just really be a part of the team, right? And kind of understand his dynamic in part. This is different than what we've seen in the past. Because in the past, Aaron wouldn't really go to OTAs. He doesn't partake in them. That's just not who he is. So I don't know. Dwayne, what are your thoughts? Um, I think he's trying to trying to trying to make the right impression. Is and he's probably I, I would think part of like the reason Aaron chose that role is because one, they have a really good team. And I think two, there's a young quarterback on the roster, right? who has talent, but I think lacks lacks the understanding on how to be an NFL coach, I mean, NFL player, and like with all the preparation, whether it be, you know, coming out to practice early, um, putting in extra time to study and know the playbook, you know? And so I believe that was communicated to Aaron, like, hey, Aaron, we need you to be just completely dialed in because everybody respects what you've done in this league, but now they need to see it you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. They need to see all the nuance you bring to the game. So being at all the OTAs, right? Being at, um, being in the locker rooms, being vocal, being, um, you know, the leader that everybody believes a guy who's won Super Bowl and multiple MVPs, they want to see that. And I think he took, he took a step in that direction by attending all the OTAs. So um, I'm hoping that he, I'm hoping that he continues on this trajectory because Everything coming out of Green Bay made it sound like he didn't want to be part of the team. And that goes back five years. You know, he's always been in some kind of rift with management over there. So it was refreshing to see that Aaron Rodgers is, um, you know, trying to start off his 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 new uh, career in New York with, um, you know, on the right foot, so to speak. Yeah, I agree with that. I think it's nice to have a clean, fresh, straight, straight, sorry, clean, fresh, slate whoever yes. you are right mm -hmm. this is a good opportunity for aaron to come in to the new york jets right put his stamp on there be a mentor which is super important for these young guys right and kind of show people what he's about it's time for him to humble down a little bit mm -hmm. and for him to just let his actions speak for it so i'm excited for the season for them I'm excited to see what Aaron brings to the table. I hope that, you know, I wish him the utmost success there. I don't know how many years he has left. And so I hope yeah. that he uh, he makes another Super Bowl and he kind of just proves the naysayers wrong. Yeah, I think so. And I mean, but and, and let's talk about it because New York Jets, I think I believe this is year three for the head coach, Robert, Robert Sala, who came over from San Francisco as the D coordinator. Mm -hmm. It seems to be, you know, just from a, a arm armchair uh, football fan, you know, um, it feels like, you know, he has a lot of respect from the players in the locker room and probably even in NFL circles, you know what I mean? And perhaps Aaron just has more respect for Robert Sala than he did some of the uh, leadership in Green Bay. And so he's willing to, you know, maybe um, acquiesce to all their requests in all their demands, you know, um, and perhaps that's why he showed up at all the OTAs. Well, we'll, we'll see more to come in that. Obviously we will, more to uh, come. yeah, we will definitely see. I again, wish him nothing but success. Uh, 
he's not my top favorite quarterback, but he's up there in quarterbacks yeah. that I respect. So um, I like Aaron, his, I like his game. I'm sorry, I can't it, agree with you. I like Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, yeah, Aaron. <laughs> like, like, like yeah. congratulations. Keep up the trajectory and uh, good job there. And you know, um, I got a little and, and not to not to not to cut you off. You're good. Rodgers is a NorCal guy. I'm a NorCal guy, so <laughs> I've got to pay homage right now. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see what he does. More to come on that. I'm sure this isn't the last time we speak on him. When the NFL yeah. season starts, we'll probably start diving in. For sure. Uh, let's, you know what? Let's head into kind of why we're here, right? So we've put together an episode on the transfer portal. So if you haven't listened to that, please go and listen to the transfer portal episode. Dwayne, unfortunately, couldn't be a part of it. We did an episode on NIL and that episode was packed and well received. I think uh, today we're going to blend it all together. We're going to bring up a couple things that we strategically did not bring up and we're going to kind of close the gaps a little bit and tie everything together. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so with that being said, transfer portal news, there is nothing that I have right now. I mean, everything is pretty low key right now, considering most of uh, the college sports world right now for football completed spring training, completed the spring scrimmage games. We're going into summer workouts. So there's not really anything notable right now. I haven't seen any new news as far as the transfer portal in any of these schools yet, aside from what we already brought up last time. So Nothing really new in the transfer portal world. Again, that could change. It could change. The transfer portal is kind of has a, a mind of its own, you know. It does. But it I does. but but you know, I feel bad for anybody that's sitting in the transfer for football. I feel bad for anybody who's sitting in it right now. Because it might be hard to find a home, you know. Um it's it's rough it's rough because that transfer portal and as we stated before of every athlete that goes into it probably about 50 percent, and that's higher than normal go to a different school so there's still the other 50 percent that are kind of sitting there in free agency land right yeah really i mean so if a guy is in the trans if i'm in a transfer portal football season starts in august can I still attend classes at my current institution? I'm not sure or certain on that. I don't want to misspeak on that, yeah. but you would have to assume in my mind until you find a new home, you're still going to the school that you're at, but you may not be on scholarship. Yeah. This so might be paying student loans, Pell grants, um, <laughs> in and out, salary from in and out burger, wherever you might be working at. Um, yeah, that's, that's a tough one. Well, it draws another question, too, for me, which um, we won't be able to answer, I don't think. But the other question is, what is the dropout rate of collegiate athletes from college if you can't get out of that transfer portal into a new school and you can't afford college? That's a good question because most guys, most athletes – it's my understanding once they submit their name to the portal, the 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 current the school they're at doesn't allow them to come back, for the most part. And so, it takes their scholarships away. Absolutely, yeah. Which you, it's a business, so of course that makes sense. Like think about it: you go in, you tell your employer, "I'm leaving." They say, "All right." Then you say, "Oh no, I want to come back." Uh uh, no no no. It's not happening. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't think I've ever been involved in something where if I left, like they let me come back. Like uh, that, that's just, yeah. that's like going back to your ex after <laughs> like you got dumped. Like what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. It's like you tell her, Hey honey, I'm leaving. Then she, you give it like three weeks. They yeah. stop and think she's going to take you back. 
Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, it's you like, know. hey, babe, can I get a hall pass for a month? I just <laughs> think the grass is greener on the other side. So, like, give me a All month. Right. And right. then if it doesn't work, like, don't worry, you're my second choice. Right. You know, and I don't. Mm -mm. Yeah. I can't see that being, I can't see that working out too well. No, I don't. I, I don't think so. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So transfer portal news wise, nothing new yet. Uh, again, the transfer portal still rather new, like NIL, still lots of things, still a lot of, you know, red tape and a lot of things to manage there. Uh, I don't know if you have anything you want to add on the transfer portal that we haven't already discussed, but I mean, the floor is yours if you do. No, we, we've covered it very well, but I do believe, I believe the transfer portal, and I don't want, I don't want to get too ahead of us, but I believe, I believe the transfer portal and I believe the NIL, I believe the driving force behind both of those was put in motion around 2014, 2015 is what I believe. And that was when the Northwestern football team made attempts to unionize and petition the National Labor Relations Board with their request. And that was, you know, you might remember that was the starting quarterback who was a really good player, smart player, Kane Coulter, was really like spearheading that whole that whole um, crusade, right? And um, they were unsuccessful. They were unsuccessful with unionizing. And one of the things that they were asking about was they were looking for long-term health and medical benefits, you know, on, on, that was like their core focus, but then they were talking about like, you know, lack of academic support, um, talking about, um, you know, stipends, which are these, um, these monthly stipend checks were given from the university to the scholarship student athlete to help, you know, pay for like their incidentals and housing. So like rent, groceries your utilities and it's it's not i mean i can't speak for what it was at northwestern or any other school but i could just speak to how it was where i was at and it wasn't it was it wasn't a lot of money left over at the end of the month to for leisure activities um, but i don't want to get off on that but i believe the nil and i believe the uh, transfer portal are byproduct of this movement that was started by kane coulter in 2015, 2016. And that was when they tried, they attempted unsuccessfully to unionize college athletics. They didn't, they weren't successful in that, but it got the conversation started with how can we allow athletes to make money off of their, their, their marketing themselves. So, which morphed into name, image, and likeness. And um, within that, the transfer portal you know, because um, if you give a guy, if you give an athlete name, image, and likeness ability, ability to make money off marketing themselves, you're allowing people to have more control over their own, their dominion, their, 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 their person, their name, right? Image, likeness. So now you need to give them autonomy to be able to make decisions on where they want to play sports, right? Because if I'm in New Mexico, but I could, I have the opportunity to go play in Las Vegas, um southern cal florida a larger market because i can get more money through marketing and branding myself then i shouldn't be penalized and i think that's where the the transfer portal came to be so it was like a perfect storm of both of those together which was fueled by everything that happened five years prior so um it's really interesting you know thought but i believe that's i believe you know, that's, I, be, I believe we're on to something with that. It's a good segue into my next current event topic, actually. So, uh, a couple days ago, NCAA president Charlie Baker said he wants a federal law to regulate how college athletes are paid. Mm -hmm. And within this federal law, he wants to create a registry of deals he wants to have agent certification involved and he wants to uniform contract standards. So he wants this to try and pass before next year's election. So 
the reason behind that is with next year's election going in, it's just going to push things back more and more, right? So he's trying to really push this to the forefront and get this to pass. However, if it does not pass, then he said that the NCAA will take it into their own hands and try to uh, clean it up on their own. So there's a lot within that. I mean, the, N- the NCAA got pummeled, pummeled when NIL came through. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so to build on to kind of the conversation you just had, I mean, when NIL passed a couple of years ago, it was a nine to zero unanimous decision by the Supreme Court. And there are not, like, I can count on one hand how many times a sports issue has been pushed to the Supreme Court level. I think maybe two, with this one being one of them. So that was a that was a big, big thing. And furthermore, this is the part that, like, makes me laugh, man. So in that court decision a couple years ago, mm-hmm. The NCA lawyer, their rebuttal to no NIL was, well, well, uh, Mr. Mr. Judge, Mrs. Judge, mm-hmm. the NCAA is founded on just having these college athletes play sports for free and just to have their education, and that's it. Hmm. What the fuck? Seriously, like what? No. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so let's let's rewind this for a second here. So, you mean to fucking tell me that you can go and cash out on all of your athletes performing for you on a big stage because collegiate athletics is big. Make money on the ticket sales, butts and seats. Make money on the sport at that time for that season with those players and not pay the players anything what what like this is why this is why nil came to light like it isn't out of the ordinary to have some form of monetization for the players the players are performing they're the ones beating themselves up, breaking their legs, blood, sweat, and tears. Like, why not? Mm-hmm. That rebuttal right there made me fucking laugh. Like, when I heard that, I was like, cool, so I'm a statistic. Like, mm-hmm. no, dude, no. <laughs> but that I just wanted to bring that up and bring that to light. Um so Kavanaugh pretty much, uh, Supreme Justice Kavanaugh, beat the living hell out of the NCA and said, no, if everyone else has to be held to these standards, so does the NCAA. So mm-hmm. does the NCAA. If you're going to monetize and make money, the players are going to as well. Pretty simple. I just, I just wonder how, we're gonna, how they're going to pay them is always what I wonder. I don't know. We have more to come, man. Like we're yeah. only two years into the NIL and this thing's, this thing's taking off like wildfire. It's going to evolve. Mm-hmm. And so there's definitely going to be more to come, but I just wanted to bring that up because that right there, like made me laugh. And it, mm-hmm. it now ties into this current event news, right? So it makes me laugh because the NCAA was so dead set against the NIL. And now all of a sudden, like, oh, well, we have to be held to the NIL now. We need to clean it up. Yeah, it, it, it is the wild, wild west. I think, you know, what, what I do believe is I think universities so much aren't against pay, pay, payers, players making money. I think the universities just don't want to be responsible for paying the player. That's right. The thing. Right. So, so they're like, hey, NIL, go for it. Have at it. You know, as long as you know, uh, Arizona, University University of Arizona doesn't have to pay for these players' salaries out of the uh, general fund or the endowments. We're good. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's the case. You yeah. know, 
Um, Cause you know, I did a little research on NIL too. And in 2022, they said it's reported that about 17% of student athletes at division ones participated in NIL activities. So that's, that's a small amount, you know, so there's, I want to say 300 D ones across like basketball, across all sports. I think basketball has the most with like three, I want to say it's like 300 to 310. So if we're talking, uh, 17 percent of division one athletes you know i don't know how many d1 athletes there are but that's not a you know it's not a lot <laughs> so that means 87 percent of students at d1s did not you know so that's excuse me 83 percent rather excuse me so um it's interesting but that number will grow right it's gonna grow it's gonna increase I think so. Um, as of right now, uh, and this is just based off of the NCAA website, mm -hmm. there is about 187,000 student athletes that compete at the Division One level, okay? So 187,000. Let's do the math real quick. Yeah. You said 17%, right? Yeah, I've got a calculator here too. So let's see. 187,000 division one athletes. So that means roughly, uh, well, the exact number is 31,790 yeah. athletes yeah. have some form of NIL. Mm -hmm. And now let, let's drill down a step further. All right. So they said local deals um, surpassed, you know, all deals with national brands, right? So that's like your, your local sandwich shop, burger joint, um, local clothing store, all that. That's where the bulk of the, your NIL deals came from. You know, um, restaurants, they, they like to call them quick service restaurants, but that's just local fast food chain, you know, yeah. something go to McDonald's or Taqueria, something like that. Um, and that was only, that was like 20%, um, about 20% of NIL deals. So know. the big deals, so like Mercedes and all of that. Those are small. They said uh, auto category, ad, auto category was at 4%. You know, so four percent, four percent of one hundred and eighty-seven thousand, yeah, is seventy-five hundred athletes. That's still quite a bit. Seventy-five hundred athletes divided by three. So that's maybe so. If there's seventy-five hundred and there's three hundred schools, that means, yeah, that's this is. It's a decent amount. It, it, I mean, if we're if we're looking at this versus professional, that's a pretty decent amount, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's more athletes in the college world, I believe, than in the professional scope. But what I wonder, I wonder what sports made up that percentage? Because one thing they did report is that um, a lot of Division one athletes in the non revenue generating sports were the ones that were making it, making okay. it. So like your gymnastics, maybe golf, you know, some of these Ry rifle shooting, <laughs> archery, you yeah. know, equestrian. The, maybe you know? the swim and dive teams, like For because, sure. So the teams that go probably to the Olympics and, and man, Olympic sports the are mouth. the ones that probably are getting a little bit more if we're right. drawing some conclusions here i know we're focused on football and we're focused on collegiate football mm -hmm. but like if we're really drilling down on this i think like you're on to something here these non like you know these non-funded sports are these sports that are funded very little have mm -hmm. more appeal for the nil yeah than like football and basketball and stuff. Actually, you know, I need to take basketball out of that because I think the biggest one, if we look at football and basketball, is probably basketball for NIL. Yeah, I would think so because there's an immediate return to the prof in the professional ranks, right? So if you got a hot shot basketball player who is, you know, certified top a lottery pick, the shoe companies might want to come snatch them up immediately, right? That's That's the goal. You know? It's like recruiting, in my opinion. So mm -hmm. when I look at this, 
these are like like people endorsements and training right so like nike goes to uh, i don't know whatever hot shot that's in college like hey we're gonna do this with you and if you do well and you make it into professionals we're gonna sign a bigger deal or whatever the sure. case may be i think it's a good training ground for how who the new like face of whatever company is going to be for that sport at that time. Like, I think it's a trial run in my opinion, because when you look at it, NIL outside of, of uh, collegiate sports is not NIL. It's just endorsement deals. That's it. Wow. Yeah. I mean, think about that. That's, I think I think uh, NIL and you know you know I think like with like marketing firms right like to go on like the shoe deals like how do they if they get it like how do you if you find somebody you want to sponsor like what does that contract look like like if if I give you an NIL deal, you're a hot shot basketball player. I'm Nike. Can I give you like the full $10 million shoe deal as part of your NIL right now? Or do I need to say, I'm going to give you like, is there like a cap? Why would you though? Like, let's, let's know. think about this for a second here with our business minds. Cause you and I are highly educated. If I am the marketing director of Nike and I am looking for my next face in that sport, it is perfect for me to approach a collegiate athlete, mold that mind a little bit, give a little bit because you're not signing an endorsement deal, test the waters. And then if things work out right, automatically have an endorsement deal ready when they're professional athlete. Well, let me ask you this then. So you're that you're that big shot marketing executive with Nike. There's a really good, really exceptional basketball player. Everybody says he is going to be the number one overall pick. You think he'll sell a lot of shoes, but he's not very marketable. You mold him to be marketable, though. So like, OK, that, in yeah. the in the business world, as you and I both know, yeah, if you're deficient in a category or as we like to call it in the business world if you have opportunities that need to be addressed you play off the strengths and you develop that person with the opportunities to make those opportunities not opportunities anymore you know what i mean mm -hmm. so so it really takes self development and like that like little realm to the next level and maybe as a marketing director I'm being smart. So I have like, I don't know, maybe I have like three or four PR for, firms in my pocket. And I'm like, listen, I'm going to hook you up with this PR firm. They're going to help you with your NIL along the way while you're playing your collegiate sport. They're going to help address certain things. So when everything's all ready to go, when you become professional, you're good. You're ready to go. Your image is there. You're the face of our brand. And you also have to keep this in the back of your head too, because you're a business person. So keep this in your mind too. Nike's not the only one approaching this basketball star, right? I bet oh, you, sure. I bet you a hundred bucks. Adidas is Under Armour, uh, all Puma, all of yep. these, all yep. of these are coming at all this up. person, right? Mm -hmm. And this young mind is overwhelmed already. So now it's not about picking which one's your favorite. It's about picking the one that provides you that little bit more spazazz. So if I'm a marketing director for like Nike, I'm pitching my best damn pitch. So this young athlete sticks with us. Mm -hmm. And everything we just mentioned right now is playing out across the college. It's happening in this college ecosystem right now. Maybe not with every athlete, but they're 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 bird dogging athletes that they're like, yo, that guy right there, 
we can make good music with him. You know, he's like a little you. rough around the edges, but we need we need to sink our hooks into him right now. Enhance his areas where he's not so strong and really highlight the areas he excels. You know, maybe he's very personal, personable, has a great personality on top of being a good athlete, you know, a stellar athlete. So I think what you that's happening right now in college basketball, for sure. You know, because you can get you can get them in out of college into the pro ranks where you can just really just. I mean, you can make them the face of your organization if you want to, you know, but football, you got to wait three years. It's like you said to me, it's the Wild West right now. So there aren't very many rules aside from what we brought up in our last episode with the red tape on following the like state regulations, university and college regulations, NCA regs. So there's not very many like clear cut, like defined rules on where to head. Right. So yeah, it's like the wild West. Everybody's like fighting for everything right now until there's more structure. But you know what I like about this conversation the most Let me remind you all, we are a self-development entrepreneurship business podcast. Everything that we just brought up falls into those lines. You're marketing yourself. That's entrepreneurship. You're trying to develop to be this image for these companies and be the face of the image and clean, right? That's self-development right there. This is why... This topic and speaking on sports and specifically NIL and all of that isn't far-fetched from this podcast. Mm -mm. It's not. And everyone is not going to have the opportunities for these, you know, these seven-figure marketing deals, even six-figure marketing deals, right? But for those that do, these are things they should consider, right? How, I think, I think, I think you said it well. You know, how do they make, how does the athlete make a decision on which, which company that they, they want to uh, align with, you know, is it going to be Nike? Is it going to be Puma? Will it be Adidas? Will it be uh, Under Armour? Who will it be? You know, how do you make that decision? I think at that point, it becomes, it becomes one of those situations where they begin to ask the the marketing agency, what can you guys do for me? How can you help me? beyond my playing days right how can you help me become more of an icon within you know the american sports land the international sports landscape not just domestically but we're talking about globally right i think these are the questions that the athlete needs to have because that's the that's the way to really cement yourself and establish a legacy be a transcendent uh client of the organization you know not just selling sneakers but you want more out of it so i think and and, we're onto something and you know i had a soapbox moment last time right so the soapbox moment this time is are these athletes really considering this are they jumping at the first deal that they get because they're so excited and so young You know what I mean? Like, so for the soapbox moment, we just kind of brought up the like roadmap right here. If you are in this situation right now and you're a collegiate athlete listening to us, the first thing you need to do is go through the vetting process is what I would call it. You need to take all the deals under consideration before just saying yes. You need to make sure that it's the right fit, not only for you, but for where you're heading. So don't just take the deal to take the deal. And a lot of these young minds are because they're not, they're not there yet in thinking about these things. So let's just give them the sauce right now, Vet the deals, make sure that this aligns with where you want to head, make sure that you can actually fulfill what they're asking of you like if if it's something that you don't think you can fix you don't think you can develop yourself you don't think you can be the person that you want or they want you to be don't take it absolutely because that's when issues happen that's when you fall on your face that's when you put your ace of spades in and you say this is my ace of spades right here 
And then one day it's ripped from you and then you have nothing. You need to be a smart athlete in this day and age. In this world right now, if you aren't intelligent enough to vet through these things, take money, hire someone, and make sure you have someone in your corner to vet these things. Because guess what? You making one wrong decision may screw you over for the rest of your career. Mm -hmm. I think you made a great point. You know, make sure that the company that you're going to join forces with make sure the vision they have for you within that company aligns with what you want for yourself. Because if, if there's a disconnect, it's going to fall apart and it's not going to work. They might want someone who's going to be the face on billboards, on all kind of television commercials. But then you just want to sell, you just want to wear their sneakers on the court or on the gridiron. And that's it. You don't want to be in all these commercials. You want to, you just want the free product. You want the, 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 the checks, the person, the royalty off all the, your shoe line that's sold, but you don't want to be in all these commercials, but if they want that, it's not going to work that it's not going to work for you. So really understanding where they where their vision, is it going to be aligned with your vision of self? So knowledge of self is critically important in this situation, right? That's yeah. number one. Yeah. And furthermore, yeah, people probably get mesmerized with the money. You know, they see, oh, company A is going to give me three million. Company B is going to give me five million. But really, company A is a better fit, but it's less money. You know, man, I would take three million right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> give it to me but so, so no, in all honesty in all in all seriousness that situation plays out for sure oh yeah oh yeah and here's the better thing like let's put it in let's let's take it from a different approach just in case they didn't understand it from the approach we just brought up let's take it from like when you and i graduated when we graduated, we had a chip on our shoulder. We had our degree. We were fresh out. We were like, hey, I'm ready to make some money. I was told in high school, I can make 100 grand. Where's my 100 grand? That's not how it plays out in the real world, folks. So how it works in business is the first thing you need to do is find a job that aligns with you, what you're about, your personality. The company's culture damn well better align with who you are. Because if it does not, then you're going to be unhappy. Mm -hmm. You're not going to last. Burnout's going to happen. And that's all she wrote. You're going to be jumping from job to job to job, living on mommy's couch still mm -hmm. because you can't maintain a job because you forgot one critical step, which was finding something that aligns with not only your education, but who you are and what your make is. So you really need to know in this day and age, right fucking now, who are you? What are you? What are you about? I think all colleges at the end of your senior year should make you write a paper where you have to think about what did you learn? Who are you? What are you about? Because that enlightens you into helping to find something that is the right fit for you after college. Now to translate this back into NIL, it's the same shit, folks. You need to know who you are to pick the right deals to align with you. So if someone's telling you that your image needs to be like rainbows and unicorns, and you're that gritty ass guy or girl for that matter, that's probably not the right fit. No, you're right. It probably isn't the right fit. But it's like you said, you need to understand who you are aside from, you need to understand who you are, not what you do, right? So just because you play baseball, basketball, you're a gymnast, tennis player, football player, that's just what you do. That doesn't define you, right? 
So like you're saying, you need to know who you are so you can make sure your opportunities are aligned with who you are at your core, right? Who you are when the playing days are over. You know, are you gritty? Maybe you're just an articulate guy who just wants to sit back and read books and is rather reserved and quiet. Or some people are very gregarious, big personalities, right? You need to get with a company who, who values you, right? And if you don't, it's everything you said, Dustin. It's not going to work and you're going to be miserable. And you're going to be kicking yourself because you didn't take time to really understand who you are and how it aligns with the opportunities that have been presented to you. And that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's it. That's just... That's it. That's it right there. So and it sounds so simple, but it's really not. It's your sport is your resume. Okay. Like, let's just be realistic here. Your sport that you've perfected since you were a little baby or whatever the case may be, or you're an anomaly and you were perfecting it only in college. That's the resume to get you into the door. What mm -hmm. gets you through the door and locking the deals is all the intangibles that we just brought up. So I just want everybody to know that there is so much to NIL already, but there is so much more that these young minds need to think about. And I will go back to the episode that we recorded last week as well and say that your first priority right now is not locking a fucking NIL deal. Your first priority right now is to your education and your team. Do not, and I repeat, do not be that person, that guy or gal that rolls the bus over the team for money. Absolutely. The team is the most important part right now. Be a team player. You made a great point. Um, the high school athlete looking to go to college, the NIL, the size of the NIL should not be like the determining factor because in mo or your opportunity to get NIL at the school should not be the determining factor on where you go. Because it, to be completely honest, the value of the degree is greater than the NIL you're going to get. Unless you're the lottery pick in the NBA, your first round pick in baseball, your a top 10 pick in football who might have these massive NIL deals. The average kid, you know, was only getting, you know, what my statistics said, $1,300 was the average per deal in NIL the first year, right? First year NIL deals, the average deal was $1,300. And, you know, they said median compensation was $65 per NIL deal. So it's not significant. But the thirteen hundred dollars is like toilet paper in this economy. So come on. So think about it. That's that's a hundred and ten dollars a month. Hundred actually a hundred and eight, hundred and seven dollars and fifty cents to be exact per month. So my thing is this: I'm not against nil. I'm all for it. But I'm saying the value of the degree, dollar for dollar, is going to be greater than what you get out of the nil. So don't let the nil be the driving force on why you make your decision to go to a school right listen let's let's just put it into better perspective for them the perspective is this you're not going to be in your sport until you die that's just not going to happen and life is full of decisions get your fucking degree because you need something to fall back on because sure. if you get injured and i've seen this time and time again and so have you yeah, that's it. That's all she wrote. And if you were that person that didn't get your degree, well, I'm probably ordering a McDonald's cheeseburger from you because you can't get into a job yeah. that you were going to get your degree for because we are in the day and age now where a bachelor's degree is a new high school diploma. Right. We are in the day and age where if you graduate high school, that's great. Congratulations. And I am not against like everybody that graduates high school, please graduate high school. Do not not graduate high school. But what I'm telling you is we're in the day and age now where a high school diploma does not mean shit. 
a bachelor's degree is so inflated now. It's a dime a dozen. It doesn't mean shit anymore. But a bachelor's degree is the new entryway into any job right now. And And as we go through all of this, as my daughter gets older, a master's is probably the new bachelor's, right? It gives you some credibility. It does. It gives you some credibility. And the credibility is is big, right? And And let's... Let's be real, real quick, Dwayne. You and I have had this argument before. Let's be real. A degree to me is not prestigious anymore. A degree for employers is not, and when I say prestigious, I mean to employers. It's not prestigious anymore unless you're going into like engineering, architecture, you're getting a juris doctorate, whatever. Okay. What a degree is to an employer is it sparks their mind on saying that girl, that man, that woman, that whatever was able to put forth four years without quitting. Mm -hmm. I want that person on my team because that shows me longevity. Mm -hmm. That's what these employers and people look at when hiring, when they say bachelor's preferred or required or whatever it isn't because they want to see your bachelor's and they want you to foster transcripts it's because they want to see you completed it and you put the four years in that shows right there some credibility that you're able to stick something out you're not quitting absolutely and and it it says even more when a man or woman goes back to school they have the bachelor's degree they go back for the for the master's degree because now you're doing something that you know your mother or father your aunt and uncle they might have forced you to go to get the bachelor's right but the master's degree that second that secondary degree that's all you that's your desire to 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 f- continue your education to learn more and to acquire new skills to make yourself a more valuable contributor to the uh, workforce or maybe start your own business right but it says something about the individual that wants to go and make that effort and And then you have the like few insane people like me that have the post-secondary degree and that that that's not a dime a dozen that's still a very 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 small fraction of a percentage of at least the U.S. I think it's only like now. I don't have this. In, this this one needs to be fact checked, but I want to say the number of Americans that have a Ph.D. in any in any domain is like two percent, maybe one percent. And I want to say master's degrees is somewhere around between eight to twelve percent. It's the numbers are really small. Um, so if we can get a fact check on that. You know, but if I was there, I'd give you a pat pat on the back in that uh, in that in an atta boy. <laughs> but you know, the 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 numbers are small. They are uh, very small. So right now, based off of um, based off of the U.S. Census Bureau, fifty three point seven percent as of twenty twenty one have some form of a collegiate degree. So that could be an associate's degree. That, can that be could a- be associates on up. So 53.7% of Americans okay. have some form of a degree. Okay. Okay. So diving into the census even more. Um, When we look at Americans with a master's degree, mm-hmm. the numbers change, right? So the number of people with a master's degree ages 25 and over is 13.4%. I told you of which are you ready of which the ages of 25 to 30 are 9% of that. Mm, Okay. A professional degree. So that's below doctorate and PhD, right? It's just a professional degree. 3.4% ages 25 and over have that degree of which 25 to 32 percent of that doctorate two percent of americans 
have a doctorate degree right now of which between the ages of 25 to 30 half of that one percent has oh see so 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 you're pretty significant you're in you're in elite and exclusive uh category right but those are important statistics to dive into and this leads to the conversation that i had in the past okay which was this so if we look at associates degrees right now it's pretty well saturated at 45 percent of americans have an associate Mm -hmm. a bachelor's is 35 percent that number when you and i were going through school was about 10 to 12 percent less so it's super saturated right now masters is still pretty good right it's still still prestigious right it's still about 13 percent so only 13 percent of americans went past bachelors so far Mm -hmm. and this these statistics are as of 2021 that's probably the most current data that's that's out there yeah, this is the most current census. So when we retake the census again, this number is going to be a little bit bigger, but I still think from masters on, it's still going to be smaller. So what we're going to see is a pretty big uptick in people that went back to school during COVID and got their degree or finished their degree out. They, I bet a lot started it during COVID. Even Yeah, even started it, but the ones that didn't finish but then they lost their job or something happened or they had more time on their hand because they were stuck at home. Mm -hmm. They finished their degree. And so we're going to see in this next census an uptick. So what does this mean to what we're talking about right now? Because I don't want to get off on a tangent. Drawing this conclusion back to NIL and sports, what this means is it's pretty significantly important to finish the school that you went to on purpose. Even if you went to be an athlete and you want to go in the professionals, that's fine. Get the damn degree. Get the degree. Set yourself up. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's That's, all. That's that's it. That's it. And and it's really like, make the decision, the decision on where you choose to attend school if you have multiple options should not be solely based on the NIL value. Nope. Nope. It needs to be, you need to go somewhere that's, even if you're unsure of what you might do, write down things that you might be interested in doing and try to find schools that have programs or degree paths in those areas. Yes. Because at some point, as Dustin said, you're going to have to lean on that degree. Even if you're a top athlete, all it takes is one injury, you know, and your whole career has been derailed. And now you're looking up, oh, crap, what am I going to do now? You and know. let's let's be realistic here. Even my buddy Dante, ex, ex-Bangle, ex, ex-professional athlete, opened up the gyms in Arizona. He had a time period where he was just blowing the money he was making. We know statistically that when you make a lot of money you spend a lot of money they're not investing it no some might be but the the fact of the matter is is you have to have a fallback anyway unless you're like tom brady peyton manning or some of these big big names where you can Aaron buy out, yeah where you can just buy out a damn team and create your own career after football or whatever yeah. like that's an anomaly you don't see every athlete doing that. So you have to, I repeat, you have to set yourself up. And I mean, that's it. And when we're talking football, the average career span is 3.3 years. So let's just say a guy made his first year, he was 22. Year two, he was 23. Year three, he was 24. He gets cut three, two games into the fourth season and never plays again. And he was making league minimum, let's say 700, 800, 900,000 or whatever it was. That's not enough money to live the rest of your life. No. It's just not because you're so young. Right. You know? And then, you know, it was going to be taxed, you know? 
Oh yeah. So you know, and I'm not sitting here. I'm not sitting here to to sound like a, you know, a pessimist. But let's be honest. You're making that money. You're paying taxes on it, and you've got to figure out what's going to happen next, right? You've got to have some understanding of where you want to go because each day you're not in the league and you're trying to get on. Your bills are continuing to come. Your apartment, your mortgage, your car payment. You're just the the occupation of living requires money. So um, you've got to have something to fall back on. So as you said, don't let the NIL and the allure of the transfer portal keep you bouncing, ping ponging from school to school to the point where you never get a degree. And we, we've seen some, some basketball athletes, and I don't want to pick on basketball, but we've seen basketball athletes four years, four schools, right? I don't know how that even can work but it's happening it's 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 going down and that's a thing and i can't see how that student athlete can actually graduate you know um i can't see if i'm the manager of a professional team so say i'm the manager of i don't know the golden the warriors we'll just say the warriors i'm sitting there and i'm saying why do i want to recruit that guy he may be talented but he bounced from school to school to school. Mm-hmm. Who's to stop him from bouncing from professional club to professional club to professional club? Yeah. Like it, that's your resume right there. Your resume has a track record of bouncing from school to school to school. Absolutely. Why I mean, do I want you? I mean, and, and I'll put my scout hat on right now. Like you will look at that as, as a general manager. You're going to say, well, obviously, there, there could be situations where someone, you know, starts at one school and transfers to another, right? It just wasn't the, it wasn't a good fit. Like the, the, the schemes changed and they were no longer, their skills didn't fit what the team wanted to do. So you leave, right? But a kid who's been to four schools, you start to say, well, did they leave? They didn't give their chance. They didn't give themselves the opportunity to fail. Because soon as there was a sign of failure or things were going their way, they didn't want to buckle down and work harder to change their situation and make it improve it. They just said, you know what, I'm going to take the easy way out. I'm going to go get in the, in the transfer portal and go to another school. You know, and that's and you want to see some some ability to persevere. Right. As a as a as a scout or a general manager picking players for a team. I think that's important. Because you need to see that this person has dealt with that. How do they handle adversity, right? It could be an adverse situation in practice, in the game. How are they going to respond? Are they going to just run? Are they going to say, you know what? I can't do this. Go look for a different opportunity. Or are they going to say, you know what? I wasn't as strong as I need to be in this area. But you know what? I'm going to go back. I'm going to retool. I'm going to start working to develop myself. So the next time I'm in this situation, I can perform at a higher level. And, you know, that's something that people look at. You know, these are the the the, the aspects, the mental aspects that people, that scouts and general managers and personnel executives consider, right? Nobody says that. It's not all about how excellent you are on the field, but how are you mentally? You know, can you handle the difficult situations, the adversity? People want to see that. The word of the day that we're looking for here based off of our conversations is consistency. We're looking for consistencies within everything. I understand using the transfer portal once if something happened like you had mentioned where the culture changed Mm -hmm. and it just isn't a good fit for you. Where I don't agree is this pseudo abuse of using the transfer portal where you're jumping from school to school to school because you're just trying to make it and that's it. That is abusive use of the transfer portal. It's very and, abusive. And, abusive and it's 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 also it's also gonna be a deterrent when you have someone like you who's a recruiter or a general manager or whomever looking at your pseudo resume you know you know what i mean so like 
the 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 fact of the matter is this the transfer portal is a great tool for what we've mentioned but it isn't a tool to be abused and so we're going to see an evolution in the transfer portal i'm 100 percent certain of we're going to see an evolution in nil we already brought up current events right now where the ncaa wants some form of structure based off of the nil so we're already seeing positive steps for evolution here. So I don't want to beat a dead horse. I think we brought up a lot of good points. I do want to move forward. We've already talked about NIL in depth. So if you guys haven't done so already, take a listen to the first NIL episode. Um, same with Transfer Portal. We have a Transfer Portal episode as well, too, to learn a little bit more about that. Um, where I want to move right now, and this is kind of, closing everything up and closing up the loose ends that we have right now is what does NIL look like beyond the NCAA? And I want to look at what recruiting looks like as well, going into professional sports, which is where you flourish. So NIL beyond the NCAA, we already kind of dabbled in a little bit um, by talking about that Nike like comparison. So we already kind of, like touched base on it a little bit, but really NIL past NCAA, your name, image, and likeliness or likeness does not change. It just, it gives you a head start for these deals that you sign with like mm -hmm. Nike, Adidas, whatever the case may be. So I think we were on to something earlier when we were saying that it's kind of you're on a stage right now where you're trying out. And then when you get into professionals, you either got the gig or you didn't. So NIL outside of NCAA is still going to be an important tool. And I think it's going to be leveraged even more as the years progress more. So I, I, I can't say for certain for us right now, we do not have research of NIL beyond NCAA because we would have to talk to people that had NIL deals within the last two years that are in professional sports. And that sample size is pretty damn small. So we have not. And so we can't sit here and tell you, yes, we have, and give you that relevant information. We can speculate like we already have and tell you that as NIL becomes bigger and bigger and it goes through and seasons itself a little bit more, where we're five, 10 years down the road, we are going to have that data. We are going to have that research. And I mark my words, what we're going to see is that the NCAA stage is the tryout for all these big brands like Mercedes, Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, Puma, all this to try out who their next face of that sport is going to be for that brand at that time. And then the deals are going to roll through. That's what I think. Uh, Dwayne, you might have some different opinion on it. I'm not certain, but that that's my thought. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I was always wondering if NIL deals will carry over into professional sports. So if I have an NIL deal um, as a college athlete and say I have a, a Bank of America, somehow Bank of America, who is a big brand, gives me an NIL. I go into the NFL, does that NIL end and I start a new a new contract? Or say I go to a team that has a sponsorship with like Wells Fargo, am I prohibited from keep maintaining the NIL deal with Bank of America, though Wells Fargo sponsors the organization I'm going to? Is there is there a, is there a is there a conflict of interest there? So that's one of the things I was wondering, because we haven't, there's not enough history with the NIL. So there's not, a lot of precedent hasn't been established because it's such a, a novel concept. But, you know, I think um, what you are going to see is, like you said, it, because of, with pro sports, a lot of what they do with the athletes is driven on how the team can make money off the athlete. like. Is he marketable, right? All those local deals that the Dallas Cowboys have, there are certain players that just really fit with how they're trying to market their product, you know? 
And um, that I think that plays a role to an extent in how these teams select players. You know, can, hey, we like this Tom Brady guy. I mean, he can help us sell a lot of tickets, a lot of jerseys. You know, maybe people, women find him handsome. So maybe now we can appeal to a whole new client base. I mean, we're laughing, but I'm serious. These are these are discussions that are had in the back office. You know, like, can we maximize his value to benefit the organization? And so some of that will be discerned through the college NIL, right? How is he with, how is he went as a marketing a agent of marketing you know can you maximize his value to bring drive more revenue into your organization and um i i'm sure we're on to something with that it's a test run you know is he and well spoken and as know? of right now my answer to all these questions that we just brought up they're valid and great questions my answer is only time will tell statistics yeah. and research. So mm -hmm. this is something where this isn't going away. We're going to talk about it in the future. But as of right now, what there is to be discussed, we have discussed. We have brought everything up and we have brought it to everyone. And we have brought it to light with our opinions as well. And none of the opinions are negative. This is more of an education of how to leverage it appropriately. And that's that. Um, so more to come, more to come with NIL for sure. More to come with Transfer Portal, obviously, as news starts to unfold, as we start to get into the season a little bit, as we start to see a little bit more, uh, even with this NCAA um, president trying to pass certain things, we're going we're gonna to bring it to light and we're obviously going to educate on it. So, I mean... That's all we have for NIL and transfer portal. Is there anything else you want to add, Dwayne? I think um, I think the NIL is here to stay. Transfer portal. I think uh, you know what? I think there's going to be more, and you can. I'm looking into my crystal ball right now, so everything I'm telling you is really about to happen. Maybe a couple years, but it's going to happen, right? So you'll see more of a framework established around NIL, excuse me, around transfer portal than you will NIL. Because the transfer portal is has more of an impact on the university as opposed to NIL. NIL is kind of independent. It's kind of like it's in an orbit that necessarily doesn't impact the sports landscape, but NI but transfer portal does. So I think for that reason you'll see universities get sick and tired of being pressured to um, enroll students or admit students who are coming from universities that don't necessarily have the, uh, he doesn't, he or she doesn't have the incoming credits to actually get accepted. And they're being pressured by, you know, the coach or the athletic director to let them in. So I think you'll see, you'll, I think you'll see some real uh, changes to that, to that element of the, of our conversation, but NIL, will never change. I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to get better in, in a sense, right? But I don't think it'll be any radical changes. But I do think, because you and I both have, we both have an MBA, right? You've got the PhD. But as a kid coming in, you know, from either junior college or, you know, high school, do you think it makes sense for them to study business? Like marketing, since the NIL opportunities are there, they're going to be making money because you think the kids coming from high school, they've never really had to manage a budget, <laughs> you know, like they might have had a part time job at the zoo. You Why know? would they have to study it, though, if they can hire someone to do it for them? That's the thing, right? Yeah. So you're in but, you're going to see that you're going to be in a world where if you don't study business, you have someone that you vetted out that is going to do it for you so you can pursue something else. Or you're going to see an influx in athletes studying business and business marketing. So I sometimes I just love playing devil's advocate. You always <laughs> so, love playing devil's advocate, not sometimes, all the time. So, <laughs> so okay, so how do you vet something that you, how can you vet someone 
when you're not necessarily equipped to do the vetting. So what you're asking me just so, so how can there. I hire how can I hire a good marketing or business uh agent? Right. So, I don't know anything about it. So just so we're clear, what you're asking <laughs> me is the million dollar question that new people yeah. ask me when you hire them for a company, right? How do I know what questions to ask to get better if I don't know? And that that's a really good question, right? Really good devil's advocate question. The response depends on where you're at in the process, right? It yeah. depends on who you are individually as an athlete. Where 18 you're and at. a half. Yeah, 18 yeah. and a half. Yeah, but yeah. there are 18 and a half year olds that know their shit and 18 and a half year olds that act like they're six. Okay. So like what I'm <laughs> what I'm trying to say here is yeah. maybe it depends on where you are in the NIL process and how serious you are at going professional, right? And at that point, maybe you have someone that's in your corner that already knows. Maybe your parents already know. Maybe the vetting process is easier that way. If you are someone who has no clue, has no one in your corner, then that's where you have to educate yourself, right? That's where you have to upscale yourself on your own and do the homework and research. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that every decision that I've made from 18 and on has been perfect. I've oh, fallen yeah. on my face a few times, but it's those moments when you fall on your face that you learn to pick yourself back up and make a different sure. decision, right? So yeah. I guess the answer to your devil's advocate question, which is how do you know what you don't know? Well, it takes a certain amount of research and education and doing your homework to be able to figure out those questions to ask. It takes listening to a podcast like this one, for example, where you're getting the little key nuggets and yeah. it gives you those aha light bulb moments where you're like, let me write that down. They have a point. I want to do some more research on that. It's going to really, really what we're going to need to see from these young kids is them to take the bull by the horns a little bit better instead of being needy mm -hmm. and, and doing, doing their own research and homework and or enrolling into majors that give them that knowledge. And let's be realistic, Dwayne. Like, I'm going to devil's advocate the devil right now. Uh-oh, uh-oh. And so here's the deal. Your first two years in college is shit for shit. They aren't classes that teach you this stuff. You don't learn the like nuts and bolts that you need until your junior and senior year, usually in mm -hmm. an undergrad, okay? So the devil's advocate being the devil now, I'm telling you right now, even if you get into that major that you want to get into to have the knowledge, you're already two years removed while playing your sport on actually like being able to make decisions. So I re I, I retract back to what I said, which is it's going to take a very special, very patient, very inquisitive individual to really learn how to ask the right questions and make the right choices. So that is my response to your devil's advocate questions that you always ask. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's a it's a, it's a legit question, and you know, there's, there's some onus that has to go on the individual to to educate themselves and understand. It goes back to what we were saying under earlier: have a strong knowledge of self and be honest with yourself. If there's areas that you know you don't, you're not as skilled or proficient. Figure it out. Begin to do the homework, doing the research, to so you can so you can you know, increase your abilities in those weak, weakened areas. Um, because with this, um, we're moving into a information age at a speed that I don't think we've ever seen in, in, in society. And um, there's no reason to not know something because information is everywhere. It's never been as easy to access information. So um, with that being said, people need to familiarize themselves with how to manage their manage their own brand and their NIL opportunities because they are there. 
And one of the things, you know, one of the, I, I didn't mention this earlier, but you know, of all the NIL um, activities, you know, they still consider private instruction. So say you were coaching kids, um, somebody had a little company, they hired you on an NIL, but you're giving private instruction to like, let's say a, a young athlete, that's an NIL deal, right? Um, so you're like a 1099 contractor in a sense. So you need to understand all of this stuff. And, uh, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's an, it's an exciting time. I wish they had NIL when we were in college, man. And I'm going to be honest because it, it, it opens up so many doors for you, you know? And, well, and, well, they have an NIL and, for adults. You and I are working on that. They, they do. They do. They do. <laughs> they, do. they do. It's called. Hey, can I give them my agent's phone number? Should yeah, I, yeah, I, for sure. Yeah. Just <laughs> send that over. Send that over to my assistant and uh, we'll get that. Situated. <laughs> I'm going to shoot you an email. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good deal. It's yeah. going to, it's going to sit there for a tiny bit, but we'll figure it out. Oh, for sure. It's all good. <laughs> No, but like, honestly, we're, we're in a, we're in a very fast paced era. We're in, we're in a time that's going to be exciting. So more news to come on NIL, more news to come on transfer portal. We tried to be very thorough with this and I think we succeeded. So I, I really, I feel comfortable with this and I feel comfortable with uh, whatever comments had our way. Remember, if you want to, shoot a comment to Dwayne, make sure to hit up linkedin.com forward slash Dwayne Taylor, right? That's correct. You got yep. it. Yep. Mm. Yep. So linkedin.com forward slash Dwayne Taylor for Dwayne's handle. You can shoot him a message, chopping with fire. Everything is at chopping with fire. That's C H O P P I N with fire. And that's on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok snapchat youtube we also have a website choppingwithfire.com there are plenty of medians for you all to ask the questions you either know or don't know and interact with us and let us have some fun with this Dwayne, i just want to take a moment to as always brother i mean i'm never going to stop doing this and never stop praising you like i'm so blessed that you and I met years and years ago. I'm so blessed that like, you know, I have you in my corner and that we can do the things we love still and talk yeah. about these fun things. So like really thank you for your insight, for your knowledge, for everything. Um, we have more fun things with you coming up. I know for our next episode, I wanted to do something fun about diving into your world of recruiting if you guys didn't know already, Dwayne is very well versed in the recruiting world. And so that'll be a fun episode that you guys mm. can look forward to in the very near future. That'll be fun. Dwayne's not going anywhere. He is a part of us. He is a part of this sports world. And we are going to talk more about it as it relates to business. So Dwayne, again, I thank you for coming on. I thank my sponsors. Um, they've been rolling on the screen all, all, all podcasts long, but Derm Dude, Inferno Performance, which is run by Dante, ex-football player, uh, Sierra Nevada Pressure Washing, and of course, because I'm covered in them, uh, Speakeasy Tattoo Company. So all of my sponsors, I thank you for allowing Dwayne and I to bullshit and actually talk on a podcast and get relevant information out without you guys i would probably be poorer than i am already and not have the equipment to be able to do this so thank you for that um and again Dwayne, as always man thank you well thank you and as always it's a pleasure it's my pleasure to join the podcast and i'm always down and i'm committed because i'm part of this too one yep. team one fight you know how it goes yep yep once you're on a team, it, that is your team. So for sure. Yep. So thanks brother. Appreciate it. We will be back with Dwayne in the very near future, as I said, and we are going to tackle having some fun with recruiting. So more to come on that. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. And thank you for listening to chopping with fire.